Hi, welcome back to SelfCAD. You are now watching part four. What are 3D primitives, the basics of topology? In this video, we'll cover the cornerstone of 3D modeling, geometric primitives. It will be divided into these parts. What are geometric primitives? The cube and its typology. Mixing technical and artistic tools in SelfCAD. Polygons, faces, and quads. Merged vertices and why we need them. Open versus closed paths. How airtight, watertight, manifold meshes work. And how to draw shapes from scratch in SelfCAD. It might seem like a lot, but don't worry. We'll guide you through every step of the way. We'll start each part by defining the key terms before proceeding with demonstrations to make it as simple as possible. What are geometric primitives? Geometric primitives are the basic shapes we all know and recognize. They are the building blocks of our physical world and are the cornerstone of any CAD software. But in contrast to the real world, primitives in 3D do not have to remain in their original shapes. Technical design, for example, often requires you to slice, subtract, and combine parts of different primitive shapes to create your final object. Artistic design, on the other hand, treats primitive shapes like pieces of clay, stretching and deforming them into their final shape. Mixing technical and artistic design tools. Industry-specific CAD software are often limited, offering you only artistic or technical modeling tools specific to their niche. SelfCAD bridges the gap between the two, allowing you to mix both design styles with a single application. However, to make the most out of this possibility, you need to understand the basics of topology structures to get the desired results, and more importantly, to make sure the designs are 3D printable. How to create basic shapes with ease. In SelfCAD, 3D shapes generate primitives, while generators allow you to create more complex custom shapes with ease. Each of these generators comes with multiple customization options, making them the fastest way to create different shapes as opposed to stretching or importing them. Furthermore, we designed our generators to create the best possible topology structure, making them the perfect base for further edits. With that out of the way, let's delve into how we create 3D objects and see what good topology looks like. We'll start with the cube, the most common 3D primitive. The topology of a cube. The cube in its simplest form is made up of six sides, also known as planes. Each plane consists of a single polygon, and each polygon has either two triangular faces or a single rectangular face, also known as a quad. A simple quad-based cube consists of six rectangles. Each rectangle consists of four edges, and each edge consists of at least two points, also known as vertices, or in singular terms, a vertex. When you multiply those values by six, which is the number of planes of the cube, it should have a total of 24 edges and 48 vertices. But when you look at it, you'll see it only has 12 edges and eight vertices. So how is that possible? The simple answer is that each vertex is reused by connected edges. We call them merged vertices. And when you move a single vertex of the cube, you will notice it reshapes three faces and two edges from each face because they all share the same vertex. But before we delve deeper into vertices, let's discuss the other pieces of topology first, polygons, faces, and quads. Polygons, faces, and quads. Any closed path is a polygon. As said before, it can consist of three edges forming a triangle or four edges forming a quad. You can think about polygons as flat sides of the object. Faces, on the other hand, are building blocks of polygons, and just like them, they can be triangular or quadrangular. It means that a polygon can consist of a single face, as was the case with the simple cube, but you can always split them to get multiple faces within a single polygon. You can split polygons into triangular or quadrangular faces, 
But in general, quads provide more flexibility for deforming the mesh. The extra edge makes it easier to move vertices to reshape faces, which is why we use quads by default when possible. For example, the most basic cube has a single face for each polygon. But with our generators, you can add segments and subdivide the polygons to multiply the number of faces for each polygon. Now let's go back to vertices and delve deeper into the idea of merging and duplicating vertices. When we talk about merging vertices, we are talking about combining shapes into one. In such cases, the software combines intersected vertices of selected shapes and removes duplicates. Consequently, when we split parts of the object, we'll create duplicate vertices at points where the pieces were connected to each other. Our merge tool has the option to remove all the duplicates when combining objects, but sometimes solid objects retain duplicated vertices. It's an especially common issue with objects downloaded from the internet. In such cases, you can use our standalone Geom Clean tool to remove duplicates and merge vertices. However, merged vertices are not just a convenient way to deform shapes, they're essential for 3D modeling because duplicate and split vertices, also known as exploded vertices, will leave open paths that will break the object's topology structure. What are open paths and closed paths? Paths are sequences of edges that start with a vertex and travel from vertex to vertex along the edges. Closed paths are those whose start and end points merge together to form a loop. There can be no disruptions along the path, which means no splits and no intersections as any such disruption will open the path. The easiest example of a closed path is a face or a polygon, where the edges connect to create a surface. However, it's important to note that paths are not surfaces by default. Path versus surface. All paths are just outlines of the object in the form of an empty profile. And to get a surface, we need to fill that area. In some cases, the surface is the same as a polygon or even a face, but it's not always the case. Faces and polygons refer to flat pieces of the object's topology. So when you draw and fill a flat profile, you'll receive a face or polygon, just as was the case with the cube. However, you can also draw in 3D in SelfCAD, and when you fill such a profile, you'll receive a surface that consists of multiple faces. One more important aspect of surfaces in 3D is that they must be what we call watertight. It means that edges outlining the surface must be connected in a continuous loop. In other words, only closed paths can create surfaces. We designed our tools to create watertight surfaces from scratch, but it is still possible to manually merge non-matching surfaces, which is why you should always make sure that all vertices are connected to the adjacent faces. What makes a watertight manifold mesh? Surfaces themselves are not considered 3D objects because they have no volume. However, when you create and fill a closed path or merge surfaces into a continuous and uninterrupted loop, you can use our Add Thickness tool to calculate its volume and turn a surface into a complete 3D shape. If you're successful, you'll create what we call a watertight or a manifold mesh without any loose edges, split vertices, or flipped faces. Any of those issues will make the object non-manifold, which will cause more problems with editing the object later on. How to draw a 3D shape from scratch. To illustrate what we just said, we'll design a simple shape from scratch to see all of the discussed steps in practice. We'll start by drawing a profile to create our shape and draw a few more details just to make this example a little more interesting. As you can see, each drawn shape formed a path. Technically, all of those paths are a part of a single profile, but in SelfCAD, you can select, modify, and remove paths with our selection tool. You can use face or polygon selection to select and edit entire paths or individual edges with edge selection. Converting the polygon into a surface. 
Once we're done with the drawing, we can use the Fill Polygons tool to fill the entire area and create a surface. We can use this tool on the entire object and fill everything at once, or select individual paths to fill them independently. Checking the face orientation. Now that we've filled the area, we need to check if the faces have the correct orientation. You can check it by enabling the back face coloring in the display options, which will change the color of the back of the face. Adding thickness. Now we can use the Add Thickness tool to convert the surface into a mesh. You can see that the mesh didn't change color, which thanks to back face coloring means all faces are pointing in the right direction. We can double check it by zooming into the object where you can see the different color of the back faces. Face normals. To remind you, face normals, or just normals for short, are vectors indicating the direction in which each face is pointing and correct orientation is imperative for mesh editing and rendering. Self-cut is great with orienting faces automatically, but sometimes, especially with complex projects, you might need to fix face orientation manually, which is why we designed the Flip Normals tool. You can use it on selected faces or the entire object, and the first use will fix all of the flipped faces to the correct orientation. Using it for the second time will invert the mesh, which you can use to look at the inside of the object to see if there are, for example, any missing faces. Intersecting profiles versus faces. As you remember, when we combine profiles, it's best to do it with the merge tool, as it combines them and creates vertices at the intersection points. But this option may not be enough when working with 3D shapes. When we work with watertight meshes, you should use the Boolean operations, which we call Stitch and Scoop in SelfCAD. With this tool, you can seamlessly combine multiple 3D objects into one, cut out the shape of an object from the other, and even cut intersections of multiple objects. We'll dive deeper into Boolean tubes in another episode. This was just meant to show you the different tools used to combine 2D profiles and 3D shapes. And that's it for this video. We hope that now you have a better understanding of the topology behind objects and why it's so important when creating and working with objects, whether they are 2D profiles or 3D shapes. In the following videos, we'll delve deeper into creating more complex objects and finally start editing the objects we just showed you how to create. So stay tuned.